Hans Andersen's Fairy Tales The Little Match Girl by Hans Christian Andersen Illustrated by Dream Studio Read by Robert Kipling It was dreadfully cold. It was snowing fast and was almost dark as evening came on, the last evening of the year. In the cold and the darkness there went along the street a poor little girl, bareheaded and with naked feet. When she left home she had slippers on, it is true, but they were much too large for her feet, slippers that her mother had used till then, and the poor little girl lost them in running across the street when two carriages were passing terribly fast. When she looked for them, one was not to be found, and a boy seized the other and ran away with it, saying he would use it for a cradle some day when he had children of his own. So on the little girl went with her bare feet that were red and blue with cold, and an old apron that she wore were bundles of matches, and she carried a bundle also in her hand. No one had bought so much as a bunch all the long day, and no one had given her even a penny. Poor little girl. Shivering with cold and hunger, she crept along, a perfect picture of misery. The snowflakes fell on her long flaxen hair, which hung in pretty curls about her throat, but she thought not of her beauty nor of the cold. Lights gleamed in every window, and there came to her the savory smell of roast goose, for it was New Year's Eve, and it was this of which she thought. In a corner formed by two houses, one of which projected beyond the other, she sat cowering down. She had drawn under her her little feet, but still she grew colder and colder. Yet she dared not go home, for she had sold no matches and could not bring a penny of money. Her father would certainly beat her, and besides it was cold enough at home, for they had only the house roof above them and though the largest holes had been stopped with straw and rags, there were left many through which the cold wind could whistle. And now her little hands were nearly frozen with cold. Alas, a single match might do her good if she might only draw it from the bundle, rub it against the wall, and warm her fingers by it. So at last she drew one out. Whished! How it blazed and burned! It gave out a warm, bright flame like a little candle as she held her hands over it, a wonderful little light it was. It really seemed to the little girl as if she sat before a great iron stove with polished brass feet and brass shovel and tongs. So blessedly it burned that the little maiden stretched out her feet to warm them also. How comfortable she was! But lo! The flame went out, the stove vanished, and nothing remained but the little burned match in her hand. She rubbed another match against the wall. It burned brightly, and where the light fell upon the wall it became transparent like a veil, so that she could see through it into the room. A snow-white cloth was spread upon the table, on which was a beautiful china dinner service, while a roast goose, stuffed with apples and prunes, steamed famously and sent forth a most savory smell. And what was more delightful still and wonderful, the goose jumped from the dish, with knife and fork still in its breast, and waddled along the floor straight to the little girl. But the match went out then, and nothing was left to her but the thick, damp wall. She lighted another match, and now she was under a most beautiful Christmas tree, larger and far more prettily trimmed than the one she had seen through the glass doors at the rich merchants. Hundreds of wax tapers were burning on the green branches, and gay figures, such as she had seen in shop windows, looked down upon her. The child stretched out her hands to them, then the match went out. Still the lights of the Christmas tree rose higher and higher. She saw them now as stars in heaven, and one of them fell, forming a long trail of fire. Now someone is dying, murmured the child softly, for her grandmother, the only person who had loved her, and who was now dead, had told her that whenever a star falls, a soul mounts up to God. She struck yet another match against the wall, and again it was light and in the brightness there appeared before her the dear old grandmother, bright and radiant, yet sweet and mild, and happy as she had never looked on earth. "'Oh, grandmother,' cried the child, "'take me with you. I know you will go away when the match burns out. You too will vanish like the warm stove, the splendid New Year's feast, the beautiful Christmas tree.' And, lest her grandmother should disappear, she rubbed the whole bundle of matches against the wall and the matches burned with such a brilliant light that it became brighter than noonday. Her grandmother had never looked so grand and beautiful. She took the little girl in her arms, and both flew together, joyously and gloriously, 
mounting higher and higher, far above the earth, and for them there was neither hunger nor cold nor care. They were with God. But in the corner, at the dawn of day, sat the poor girl, leaning against the wall, with red cheeks and smiling mouth, frozen to death on the last evening of the old year. Stiff and cold she sat, with the matches, one bundle of which was burned. She wanted to warm herself, poor little thing, people said. No one imagined what sweet visions she had had, or how gloriously she had gone with her grandmother to enter upon the joys of a new year.